Okay, in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the name change and also the code names used in Intel's upcoming desktop GPUs. But I wanted to take this opportunity to also talk a little bit about the desktop GPUs Intel is releasing and what type of performance we're going to be getting from them. So the first article is from Video Cards, and this is actually a press release from Intel. It says here, Intel introduces new high performance graphics brand, Intel Arc. The new graphics brand will cover hardware, software, and services. The first silicon will appear in products in the first quarter of 2022 in both mobile and desktop form factors. Okay, so the second article I have is also from Video Cards. It says here, Intel Arc to battle AMD Radeon and Nvidia GeForce. And I'll just read from the second paragraph. Intel Arc will debut early next year with the DG2 series of GPUs known as Alchemist. So previously it was called DG2. The manufacturer also confirmed that its successor will be called Battle Mage, followed by Celestial Android. While there have been leaks that Intel is working on DG3 GPUs, presumably Battle Mage, there was until now no information on their successors. And we have a photo here of two of their desktop GPUs. The first one, the smaller one, is the 128 execution unit model, and the larger one is the biggest one in their stack of GPUs, that's the 512 execution unit model. So just to remind everybody, Intel did come out with desktop GPUs this year, and these were the DG1 GPUs. Now, these were actually worse than their integrated graphics in their laptops. So as you can see here, the Iris Xe Max, this was in their Tiger Lake laptops. Uh, this was uh, 96 execution units. And as you can see here with the desktop variant of this, it only had 80 execution units, so less than those laptops. So we have another article from Video Cards, and it's a leak. It says here, Intel Xe HPG DG2-128EU GPU shows up with 2.2 GHz clock at Geekbench. But 2.2 uh, GHz, uh, whether it's real or not, that sounds reasonable to me. We have the mobile chip clocking to 1.65 GHz, so 2.2 doesn't seem too unreasonable uh, because you've got a lot more power on desktop anyways. So this is the Geekbench listing, and as you can see here, it says here, device name Intel XE graphics, compute units or execution units is 128. The maximum frequency is 2.2 gigahertz. The device memory says 4.67 gigabytes. I'm not sure why it has 0.67, but uh, the 128 compute unit model will most likely have four gigabytes of memory. Okay, let's look at the GPU stack from Intel and see what type of GPUs we're talking about. So we'll start at the bottom here with SKU-5 and also SKU-4. So this has 96 EUs and 128 EUs respectively. They both have four gigabytes of G6 and 64-bit memory bus. Now the integrated graphics on those Tiger Lake laptops, they have 128-bit bus, but they only have LPDDR4X. So I think those two things will probably uh, even out uh, so I think these cars will probably perform very similarly uh, to those integrated graphics on those Tiger Lake laptops. So I think these are more like eSports cars. If you want to play Dota 2 and League of Legends, I think these cars will be okay. SKU 3 is uh, 256 EUs, 8GB of G6 and 128-bit memory bus. SKU 2 is 384 EUs with 12 gigabytes of G6 and 192-bit memory bus, and SKU-1 is 512 EUs, 16 gigabytes G6, and 256-bit memory bus. These three, we're just gonna take a look at the performance um, in just a second. So looking at specs is great and all, but how does it compare to existing GPUs that are on the market right now? And the funny thing is we've actually known the performance of these GPUs for quite some time because they've already been in these Tiger Lake laptops. Now, this is a slide from that presentation and it's about how well the GPUs scale. So here we have a one tile solution, a two tile solution and a four tile solution. So uh, the number of compute units here actually is 2048 when all four tiles are active. So Basically, this slide is saying that uh, whether you're using one tile or four tiles, it actually scales very well as you increase the number of tiles. And so uh, with the one tile solution, that would actually be 512 compute units or 512 execution units. So the amount of 
teraflops that you see there or gigaflops that you see there of 10,588. That is the amount of gigaflops you would get if you had that 512 execution units model uh, operating at a clock frequency of 1.3 gigahertz. So obviously if you have 128 execution units, uh, that would be a quarter of this one tile solution. So because we actually know the performance of this Intel Iris Xe, and as you can see, there's a chart here on the right or a bar graph on the right, of the Intel Iris Xe with 96 execution unit models. This has a score of 21. And you can see there at the top, the GeForce RTX 2080 Super has a score of 116. So we can compare all of these Intel GPUs that are gonna be coming out and what their performance might likely be. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is compare teraflops. And I'll just point you to the bottom of the page here for the Wikipedia entry for Iris Xe Max. It has 96 execution units, it runs at 1.65 gigahertz and has a processing power of 2,534 gigaflops or 2.5 teraflops. So we return to the top of the page here. It says uh, laptop 96 EU at 1.65 gigahertz versus desktop 128 EU at 2.2 gigahertz. We know that the 96 EU is at 2.5 teraflops if we have a 128 EU model, that is 1.33 times better than the 96 EU model. And that means that this would run at 3.33 teraflops. And if this 128 EU ran at 2.2 gigahertz, which was the leaked clock speed in that Geekbench uh, entry, then this would run at 4.4 teraflops and the desktop 128 EU would be 1.77 times better. Now, what does 1.77 times mean? Well, that puts it roughly into the category of a GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q, uh, which has a score of about 36 on this chart. What does that mean for all the other SKUs? Well, we can just math that out again. So as you can see here, the 256 EU model at 2.2 gigahertz would be about 8.8 .8 teraflops and this would equate to about a GeForce RTX 2060, which has a user score of about 67 on this chart. The 384 EU model at 2.2 gigahertz equals 13.2 teraflops, and this would be about a GeForce RTX 2080, which has a user score of about 111 here. And the 512 EU at 2.2 gigahertz equals about 17.6 teraflops, which puts it into the range of a GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. Now, this is beyond, beyond this chart, so I used a tech power-up chart, and as you can see, the 2080 here is 73% of a RTX 3070 Ti, which is at 100%. I don't think it's going to get to an RTX 3080, so for people who thought maybe the 512 EU model would get to a 3080 or a 3090, it's probably not gonna get there because uh, that is 20% better than a 3070 Ti. So that is about it. Uh, that's all I have to show you guys. And I guess you guys can speculate on the pricing, uh, the availability we already know. I think the pricing will probably just be whatever the market prices are out now. So if the 3070 Ti has a price of say 599 MSRP, I think the Intel one will also be roughly about that. I don't think we're going to see them lower their price, especially not when they're going to have a lot less quantity available. I think because this is the first time around, they're going to keep stock load or stock tight so that they can control the pricing of their products. Okay, so that's about it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.